Hello again, everyone. Edwin Learn back once again in this YouTube astrological segment. I'm going to be talking about uh, astrology and the death of Dr. Alorna Breen. Uh, some of you may have heard of her. She had died on a Sunday. She had committed suicide. She's a prominent top emergency room doctor in Manhattan, uh, New York. And she didn't die of coronavirus, but she died indirectly. From it, my understanding is it had, may have had very well, I believe it had something indirectly to do with it anyway, very likely at the very least uh, connected with not being able to help the people that had uh, the coronavirus at the hospital she worked at more and be able to treat them and perhaps save the, these people, find an actual cure for her. And I looked up her, her birthday is on uh, mylife.com. I have October 9th, 1970, New York, New York. It puts her son, of course, in Libra. Her moon is the either uh, would be Capricorn or would be Aquarius, depending on birth time. But I, use, I improvise, of course. I don't have the time of birth, of course. I'd improvise again and did a solar slash sunrise chart for her. And at that, and at the sunrise time, of course, that puts the sun at the same position as the ascendant. It puts her uh, moon in early uh, Aquarius. And the, the first thing. Uh, that that stood out uh, mean to me with this as a, a transit is that if she was born near uh, sunrise especially she would have transit Saturn and Aquarius conjunct her natal moon and Aquarius and the thing about that is I mean if she was feeling despondent and furlong at the time uh, the thing about that is when you have transit Saturn conjunct if it conjuncting one's moon in one's natal chart can cause feelings of sorrow and, and despondency and feeling melancholy and being if, if it is the case of her moon was indeed in Aquarius perhaps not being able to innovate enough to be able to, to feel that to, what she has that perhaps that emotional need for if that moon is in Aquarius an emotional need perhaps to innovate to do things to uh, to act more altruistically selfless to be able to have that energy to really just be more helpful uh, to others and, and show that that in, in that Aquarius energy where she has an emotional need for or that or or even the subconscious uh, or even on a subconscious uh, level. See the thing about um, thing about this is too uh, in her in her chart this puts I mean the, the solar sunrise chart of course puts again the sun and Libra at the same spot as the ascendant puts Capricorn on the fourth house cusp of the end of life and there can and it, it's an indicator where there can be some despondency at that end or latter part of life uh, the fact she had a number of transits in that uh, in that fourth house in the solar sunrise chart which would include uh, Jupiter and as I've talked about as many of you may know and I've spoken about it previously that Jupiter can be rather paradoxical it could be very strongly benign and benevolent but it could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand and it, it, in this case it may have expanded very uh, despondent depressing energy in that latter or in that latter part of one's life it's a, it indicates with Pluto transiting that house as well that the latter end part of life can be very somewhat dark and uh, destructive sadly as well and she was going to be dealing with situations connected with this with the virus at the latter part of her life even if she didn't con I don't believe she contracted it but she was still dealing with those situations where uh, where she was uh, where she where it was figuring prominently in that latter and part of life uh, for her another thing some other things in the chart I noticed which could be tied in to this kind of um you know the death that she had and and I mean the thing is uh she has this her chart the solar sunrise chart puts taurus on the cusp of the eighth house and the death indicates a death at times could be tied into one's self-worth or self-esteem the chart also puts saturn in taurus in the eighth house of death and that could be an indicator of perhaps some death that were, might, might be tied into limitations or restrictions and how one uh, in one self-esteem or one self-worth how one feels uh, about uh, themselves so 
the thing about uh, this too is, uh, and sadly in that ruler, the ruler of the eighth house, which is Venus, makes a conjunction to Neptune and of course in her chart and Neptune of course the planet connected with suicide she had I believe four planets in that 12th house of suicide including Pluto which is an indicator that death can come from uh, suicide and being Pluto and Virgo it's tied into health related reasons service related reasons not necessarily her own health but perhaps being able to not being able to help people that were unhealthy it's indirectly could be tied in I mean to a health related uh, situation it was it was tied into her work and employment sadly uh, and she was unable she felt helpless and unable to help people more than she truly wanted to and the thing about it and it's really sad the way this turned out of course this was sadly eerily prophetic I hate to say this, but I was actually thinking about this recently, about in terms of people um, dealing with the, the coronavirus, I was thinking more on a personal level, like if people were actually contracted it or trying to deal with it, would they be killing themselves to, to avoid actually dying from it? Or, but at the same time, uh, I may have also been thinking about the fact that there's other reasons uh, that are connected with the coronavirus, which might compel somebody to commit suicide, which in, in terms of feeling despondent, feeling melancholy, having your life restricted in general, having all these restrictions and stipulations put on uh, people, just general fear and apprehension. Are we going to run out of food? Are we going to run out of resources? Those things that are putting people in a state of trepidation, were those things going to be tied in to people maybe killing themselves? Are we going to have a proliferation of suicides and they're going to become more, more prevalent? Now, these are some things that have to be taken very seriously. And you have somebody in a medical profession killing themselves indirectly tied in with the coronavirus people this is very serious now the people that want to laugh they want to say that make like it's frivolous or it's something they can scoff at well they need to stop laughing this has become very serious right now you have i think the u.s is closing on a million cases of this right now and even though the fatality rate may might be rather minimal in the u.s it might be around four percent it's still the death total is going to hit i believe fifty thousand at least in the united states and it's nothing where people can really look at and say this is something minuscule or minute uh another thing is in that in that solar sunrise chart for she has the ruler of the 12th house in the 12th house which could be an indicator of an ending through uh through suicide uh i read in some report on twitter or some have you on, on an um on a link i believe connected with twitter uh it was something where she died of course self-inflicted wounds Sadly enough, she has Chiron in Aries retrograde. And when you have Chiron and or Mars retrograde in a chart, there is a greater propensity, I would think, for more self-inflicted wounds. You're talking about um, Chiron in astrology can be tied in to emotional suffering, but it could also be physical as well. She did this, her chart put, solar sunrise chart, put Chiron and Aries in the sixth house and maybe... I mean, being an Aries, maybe there was some facial wounds in, in this, uh, to the wounds to the skull. Um, but I guess as the reports come out, we'll find out more information, more specifically uh, regarding this. And I noticed too in her chart, she also had Neptune uh, at 29 degrees, at the full culmination, at a critical degree. And again, Neptune is a sign of suicide. She had it in Scorpio, of course, the sign associated uh, with death. And sadly, if I'm not mistaken, it was in that second house in her solar sunrise. Uh, it was in her second house in her solar sunrise chart of self-worth and self-esteem. So sadly, we can do the math uh, on that. And the fact she had Venus in uh, 
Venus in Scorpio making a conjunction to Neptune in Scorpio. It, it tells me, okay, Venus in Scorpio by itself may find work or may find, I, I should say, incongenerated, which could all, could obviously tie it into one's work uh, very frequently, doing something related with crisis emergency uh, situations. And the fact that Neptune is conjunct Venus could add more compassion, idealism to it. And it's no surprise she was dealing with people that were dealing with a, um, a disease uh, at this time. So, though, and also, too, she had transit Uranus closing in on her eighth house cusp in her natal chart. When you have transit Uranus at or in, in the eighth house or near the eighth house cusp, that's an indicator that of an of a rather unexpected sadly in many cases an on time very unexpected unpredictable very shocking um kind of kind of death uh sadly and the thing too is is that she also had mars in the um in the uh, 12th house as well of endings in the house of suicide so I'm wondering if there's going to be any injuries that might be by her, her spleen or something where near the Virgo, you know, like a Virgo body part. Although I think that would be, there'd be greater propensity for that if Mars was retrograde, but it could indicate a violent or volatile ending when you have Mars uh, in the 12th. And again, this is a solar sunrise chart. It's not, um, it's not, uh, it's not based on her actual time of birth so of course it's very speculative but solar sunrise charts seem to have certain validity and veracity some accuracy to it even if you don't have if you don't have that in, in the event that you don't have the time of birth but when you have the time of birth of course those times are going to be uh, a lot more um, a lot more accurate uh, because those are based on the all the actual precise placements of your houses and planetary positions so Anyway, people, I don't really have too much more uh, to say about this. Again, I want to go back. Uh, well, going back to her, uh, well, also having the zodiac sign Cancer on her tenth house cusp, that could be the indicator, right, right there, of having a public image and reputation of being somebody empathetic and nurturing and caring. Uh, and I think that was the really. And, and somebody in, in the fact I mean she worked in she worked in a in a hospital as I believe it was a, a prominent emergency room doctor having a Pisces on the sixth house cusp um, obviously that could be uh, somebody that has that's in a profession where they're in a medical field or somebody that works um, with healing others and having the zodiac sign cancer on the 10th house cusp uh, in one's chart even though again this is an improvised solar sunrise chart it can be something an indicator where in your uh, in your field your career you're at least maybe perhaps bringing a lot of sympathetic energy having the reputation the um, you know, public image as a rescuer, somebody that is empathetic, somebody that shows a lot of care uh, for others, a lot of empathy. So anyway, people. Oh, I want to say one more thing. I'm sorry. Uh, by any anybody, if anybody sees us, that's a prominent family member or a friend of the family of, of this person or a friend of uh, Dr. Lorna uh, Breen, uh, please. Uh, Give the family, um, if you're, you're give, give the family. I'm, I'm offering my condolences, and and offer them to the family, and just spread the word to the family members and close friends. If you're, if you happen to be a friend of a friend of a of a um, you know of the family member, what have you. So anyway, people. That'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment. Until next time, people. Edwin Learned saying, stay well.